Hi, this is Ray. Thanks so much for watching this video channel. What we're going to cover today is all about the ethical bribe. How do we get somebody who we don't know to give us their name, an email address, and maybe their phone number? Well, as I talked about in video one and two, we have to talk, think about how we provide something of true value, something that's really going to help move your customer prospect forward and get to know you a little bit better. Creating a bribe or an ethical bribe as we call it in internet marketing is all about trying to identify what you can give away that would be very valuable to your prospect. Now let's think about value as it pertains to information. Let's think about that. You can read something, you can listen to something, or you can watch something, or you can experience something, right? These are the basic things. And as you think about these three different modalities, what strikes you as the highest value? Something perhaps that is the most engaging, right? So let's start with what I believe is the highest value. It's experiencing something. But trying to experience something over the web and give them an experience can sometimes be challenging. So we fall back to the next level. And the next level is really about video. Video is interactive. Now video can be a multiple different types of video. You can have direct live video, like me looking straight into the camera at you. Or you could have a PowerPoint set of slides that are recorded with great content. Or you could have a hybrid between PowerPoint slides as well as direct video. And you can combine the two. Now, why would you want to combine PowerPoint or text with video? Well, it's important to realize that if you don't switch up your modalities, people are likely to disengage. So that's why it may take a little bit more work in your videos, but if you can use things that reference points or bullet points or text that they can read, now they're reading. They're not just sitting back and relaxing and listening to you talk like they're watching the evening news. They're engaged, they're listening, they're active, they're paying attention. So that is probably, I think, more of the, uh, the best type of training. It's where you integrate live video so they can see you, hear you, they get a sense of what you look like, how you sound, but also they have something that is eye candy that allows them to follow if they are not able to, per se, let's say, understand your accent. If you have one, that might be an issue. It might be easier if they're able to see text. Now, if you're scared of being in front of the camera, let me just tell you this. It just takes a little bit of practice. It's not a big deal. All you are basically doing is communicating, communicating from the heart what it is that you know, because you want to help your customers. And to create great video doesn't take a whole lot. And that's maybe another topic for another day. But I just wanted to highlight that video in one form or another can really be a great ethical bribe, particularly if it's content that's really going to help them move forward. Now, another type of ethical bribe could be access to a teleseminar where you get on a phone call and you invite them to listen to something where you teach. It could be a recorded teleseminar. It could be a recorded audio file where you just talk into your computer and you basically make available to them an audio recording. So let's try and like have the rubber hit the road here and try and, and get an example of how this could work. Let's suppose you're a mortgage broker. Well, mortgage brokers deal with first time home buyers. Same with real estate agents, right? Well, that represents a target demographic of a group of people who need a fair amount of nurturing and an, an education to get them to feel comfortable, to sign on the dotted line and realize that they are taking on some pretty significant payments relative to what they've paid before, right? Well, that type of giveaway and training would be very different than if you were trying to attract an investor, somebody who's done this many, many times, right? Or let's take another industry. Um, let's suppose that you're an architect or let's suppose that you are a doctor. See, we can identify all kinds of different professions, different types of businesses who are looking for new customers. And if you're like most people, you do a little bit of research before you decide who you're going to work with and everything else being equal, if you find somebody who adds value to you, there is a law of reciprocity in place where you feel like you know, everything else being equal, I'm going to go with that person. So I'm going to give you a, a little example here. It's not really online, but I want to show you the power of reciprocity. There was a time a few years ago when I bought a property in Silicon Valley and I came into 
a real estate agent's open house and the real estate agent might actually be war watching this video. Her name's Laura Perkins. If you're in Silicon Valley, Laura Perkins will take great care of you. Just ask me and I'll give you her contact info. Anyway, I walked into this uh, open house and I was checking out this property and I didn't have an agent. But Laura got my contact information and in a, in a short period of time, like literally 48 hours, she wrote me this long email with information about the types of properties that I was interested in with her input. You see, she invested in me and then based on the law of reciprocity, I invested in her. So she not only helped me buy a property, but also sell a property. Do you see how this works? Now, you can do the same type of thing using online technology and it's all about providing something of value to your prospect. So now we've talked about video, we've talked about webinars, we've talked about teleseminars, we can talk about recording your voice into your computer and creating an mp3 downloadable, as well as creating a special report, a text, an ebook. You could even give away a free information product if you've created one. So you see there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do to help make your prospect make a better decision when they go out and are looking for your product or service. And then of course, all this goodwill will start to compile and then they will, and, and actually not compile, that's the wrong word, will start to add up. And in the process of doing that, they will, you also get referrals, okay? So there's a lot here. I hope you realize this. And I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking, boy, that sounds like a lot of work. Well, you know, you have to think about how you plan your marketing. There's different types of marketing. What I'm teaching you here is all about attraction-based marketing. It's getting people to come to you who are already qualified because they've already listened to your message. They already know who you are. They already know what you do. And by the time they talk to you, they are practically already very familiar with you as opposed to do the other approach of marketing. Now what's the other, other approach? It's old school. Old school is where you do things like place um, ads in yellow books and you can't tell if you're getting any business from it. It's doing other things like putting a billboard up on the highway. Again, you can't tell if it's successful. And the type of quality of lead that you get is gonna be far less. So this is Ray Stendel, wishing you the very best. Come back to my website so I can share more value with you, raystendel.com. I'm gonna give you a free 30 minute training that's gonna help you as you go out and build, market, and sell amazing products. So with that, have an amazing day, evening, wherever you are, and stay tuned for our next video when I start to fill in the remaining pieces of this puzzle. This is Ray Stendel, wishing you the best.